I wanted to do another um, video on the the eHydro um, controller and it seems like there's a lot of common issues out there when the battery dies uh, on these machines or really a more common issue is the, the key is left on, right? Or some, the lights are left on and the battery is dead for, you know, several days, you know, maybe a week, maybe a month, something like that. And I, and I tell you, I've seen this more than once now and, and what happens is um, you put the new battery in, machine starts and runs, seems to operate just fine. However, uh, when you go in reverse, the, uh, the controller will throw a code that the reverse um, sensor uh, variable uh, pedal, uh, pedal sensor is bad, right? Or it's not bad, there's a, there's a voltage problem. Um, so it says, you know, out of range with the reverse pedal and you really haven't done anything to the machine. You've just changed the battery, but the battery's been dead for you know, maybe a, maybe a week or a month or something like that, right? So this is this is almost like the guaranteed to happen in my mind on an older machine like this. So what's happening is is that onboard controller, the memory in there is getting um, is getting corrupted a little bit, or perhaps uh, is is wiping out some of that uh, memory on the board. So the way this controller works is it has the variable voltage, which is less than a volt, to about five volts from each of the foot, sent, uh, foot pedals, and those are just variable sensors. So for some reason, when the machine is a little older, there's an onboard battery perhaps on the control board and the battery dies, it's causing this to do, um, you know, do things to the memory that's supposed to be kind of a, a persistent memory on the board, if you will. So nine times out of 10, I've seen this a lot now, is that you put the battery in and you go in reverse, and it stops and the machine won't go, it won't move in reverse and there's a code that's gonna flash on the light on the onboard diagnostic light on the right side. So if I get on the machine here, um, you'll, see the, you'll see the code over here for the reverse pedal, right? And I wanna say it's, it's two longs and two shorts. The way these work is there's a short and a long blank. The two long blinks and two short blinks is the diagnostic code for the reverse pedal. That's the one you're going to see. Um, and again, you've done nothing to the machine by, but simply change the battery, and the battery has been dead, completely dead, for a long time. So, um, nine times out of ten, you can troubleshoot that reverse sensor. And I've got another video that shows you how to, it shows you how to do that. You can backfeed the sensor wires and check the voltage, the variable voltage, make sure it's within range. It probably will be. Um, so you can do that first if you want. Um, and then once you go through that process, uh, if it's good, if that reverse pedal, the variable sensor is good, it's within range, less than a volt and almost five volts, um, you, wanna, you wanna run through the automatic calibration on the controller. And that's, that's what I did in this machine. And so if you remember from my other video, if you haven't watched it, I wrote this down because it's so common, right? So um, you got, you're gonna go through a sequence of events uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the fuse that's in position 11 and put it in position 12, which is going to be over here. So uh, fuse goes in position 12, that 10 amp fuse. You're going to turn the key on on the machine, not all the way, um, and you're going to you're going to watch you're going to watch the light on the on the diagnostic board over here. It's going to glow all the way. Okay, now you can start the machine. In and let it run and you should still see that light glow. You're gonna take your fuse, you're gonna move it back to position 11. That's the, the normal position, that 10 amp fuse, right? So that's, that's the first step. Now, once you do that, you're gonna you know, close the door down here because you're gonna actually get on the machine. Machine's running and you've got a glowing diagnostic light over here on the right. So it's, it's, now, it's now running and it's ready to go in diagnostic mode. So what it's gonna start to do is automatically sense the, the different sensors it wants you to, to work with, right? So you're gonna you're gonna see a short, a long, a short, short flash. That means the forward pedal needs to be pressed. So you're gonna press that down, you're gonna hold it for five seconds, and then eventually that light combination on the right will change to the reverse pedal. There'll be two longs and a short and two shorts. You're gonna go ahead and press the reverse pedal all the way down. And then eventually that will change to the throttle position sensor, which is three shorts, one long. When that happens, you're gonna go all the way from um, the low idle, which is the turtle on the, on the throttle. I'm trying to see that over here. It's a turtle, right, all the way down. And then you're gonna go push the throttle all the way up. And 
you're gonna you're gonna let that uh, RPMs go all the way. Up. It goes up to about 29, 2800 RPMs on on the machine usually. Um, and then eventually what you'll see over here is you'll see a short and then you'll see three longs. This is the part. This is the part where people typically screw this up. And, and I've screwed this up a little bit in the past a few times too because if you don't do this just right, the controller gets confused between the forward and the reverse part of this sequence, right? So wait till it flashes, one short, three longs. And what you're gonna do here is you're gonna, you're gonna press this down, the forward all the way, and you're gonna look over the edge of the machine at the tires. The machine's off the ground on jack stands, by the way. That's the other part of this you wanna do. You're gonna look at the tire, and you're gonna have this in low range, right? You're gonna have this in the A position. And then you're gonna look at the tire, holding this down, and it's gonna creep. The tire's just gonna creep. As Soon as it creeps forward, not, not much, Take your foot off the, the pedal. This is the important part. Look for that sequence to happen again. It's the short and the three longs. Just after it happens, do the same thing in reverse all the way and look for the creeping in reverse on the tire. Once it happens, pull your foot off that reverse pedal and that light should go out. That diagnostic light should go off and you are done. That means you just recalibrated and it re-auto learned all the um the moving sensors it needs for the for the e-hydro for the motion controls and that's that's pretty much it so again that last part is usually where people tend to not do it exactly right and if you don't the controller doesn't know if you're on the, the forward part of that recalibration or the backwards part of that recalibration and that's the key with the controller so you do the forward first you wait for it to creep you wait for it to, the controller to tell you, okay, I've got that, I've got that in my memory. Now I'm gonna flash, you know, one short, three longs again, meaning it's ready for the reverse part of the test, right? That's where you wanna make sure you're in the right sequence. Hit the reverse, you wait for the creep, and that light, you know, once it creeps, take your foot off. That light will eventually stop flashing and it should go out completely, and that means you are done. But let's say the light doesn't go out, right? And it's flashing a different code. So another common code um, is the flywheel uh, sensor. So sometimes you'll see a short, short, a long, and a short. That is just the sensor for the flywheel telling the controller that the engine is running. Believe it or not, um, that, that code, if you start seeing that at the end of your uh, recalibration, that code um, can exist and it, it doesn't bother the controller. Meaning if you stop the calibration uh, process at that point, and all you're getting is a trouble code for the, um, the flywheel sensor, which is, uh, I think it's two shorts, a long and a short. Don't go back and rerun through the auto calibration because it won't really care. When you turn the machine off and um, you turn it back on, that trouble code for the flywheel sensor will be gone and the machine will be properly calibrated still, if that makes any sense, and you can just use it. So that's one thing I've seen, and again, if you're not getting you know, one of the four codes um, from the relearning process and it's just a trouble code for like the flywheel sensor or let's say it was the, the four wheel drive sensor, it doesn't, it doesn't block you from then just using the machine because it's actually gonna, it's gonna work when you turn it off and then turn it back on again, there'll be no, no more codes. All right, um, again, it's, it's super easy. It's, it's one of those things where people mostly mess up that the last part of this recalibration, but um, super easy to do it. Once you've done it once, you can do it a hundred times. Okay, I hope this helps you out. Okay, I wanted to add on to that video just a little bit because <clears throat> there is another um, thing that could be an issue when you do the recalibration. You have to make sure, there's two things on, especially the, the 10 series, they have these motion match and load match. Uh, motion match, um, has to do with uh, stopping and starting uh, more graceful or less graceful. And then uh, load match has to do with um, load on the engine, whether it's from the loader or the mower or the PTOs. Um, it keeps the engine kind of at a consistent RPM, if you will. So on these machines, the, the load match um, is gonna be over 
let's see. I, I always get confused, especially when these get worn off, but I believe that the most motion match is this guy here. It's gonna be on the, on the control board area with the switches are next to the light. So if you have this in the, um, the forward motion match, which I believe this is the, um, the one that stops the machine quicker and starts the machine quicker from motion from forward and reverse. If you don't have it in the lower position, the calibration won't work. It won't let you go through it all the way. So you, you gotta make sure if you've got it like that, you put the motion match in the lower position towards the rear of the machine. This is this is the one that I think if you had the um, the sticker still on here, it would let the machine roll a little bit further uh, forward and backwards when you change direction on it. The, the load match is gonna be on your left side over here. So load match being on would, would be a bad thing. So when you do the auto calibration of the controller, it's gotta be off. So make sure this is off. Load match is off, uh, motion match is off, and four-wheel drive is off, right? So everything is off. Um, that gives the controller basically the simplicity it needs to focus on the actual motion um, you know, sensors, which are gonna be more in the pedals and stuff like that. So, so again, I wanted to add this because I have tried to do the auto learning and I had this guy on and it will never let you get through the sequence and actually use the machine. And when you, when you can't actually get through the auto learn sequence of the, of the controller, you have a machine that's inoperable as far as moving forward and reverse. So it's kind of a bad thing. So once you, once you auto learn and you have this on, you won't be able to move the machine until you figure out that this has to be off. So everything off over here and load matches off. That's, that's key to getting through the auto learning process, okay?